Okay, so welcome everyone to the April edition of the Girl Scouts of Suffolk County Town Hall. Uh, we're excited uh, to join you tonight. Thank you for joining us live in person. You're the first ones to hear the, the, the newest news. Um, we're going to start today with cookies. And if you sent in a question, most of the questions are going to be actually addressed um, in the different presentations. Um, but if you have any other questions, you can put them either in the chat or in the Q&A section um, on your screen. Uh, so Kelly is gonna start with cookies. Thank you. I'm muted telling you that you're muted. Kelly, you're muted. <laughs> so I think I'm good now, right? Can you hear me? Okay, good. I tend to have a lot of computer glitches with my sound. I talk and like nobody ever hears me. So if I start to talk, if you see me, I'm mouth moving and no sound coming out, just let me know. Okay, so just a quick, we're gonna do a quick product sales update. Um, so basically Grubhub started last weekend. Um, some of you have already signed up. Some of you haven't, we still have some dates available, especially we still have, um, this Saturday at Camp Edie, all three shifts are still open. So, um, it's been a little bit of a slow start, but it's something new and it's a really good experience for the girls to get a, an idea of how the background of like a Grubhub works. So either way, it's, I think it's a great experience. Um, it is eligible for juniors and older. Um, like I said, dates are still available. Once you sign up, I'll send you the link to the training videos. Um, adult coverage is basically the same as if going on a trip. Um, if it's just a parent and their child, then that is fine. They can come, just the two of them. But if it's considered a troop event, then you have to have your proper troop coverage. Um, Anything that they pack up during that time, the girls will get credit for. Um, and I'll do that at the end of the, probably, I pr probably do it like every two weeks because, you know, it's not too much sales. So I don't want to do it every five seconds for like one box here and there. So um, if, the, if your girls are still interested in signing up, the link to the form is in the PowerPoint. Um, and it's also, I believe, available on the website. If you have any additional questions about it, feel free to email me or throw them in the chat. Um, it's really just, it's something new. It's a great experience for the girls, you know, and we'll see how it goes. You know, we can't, it can't hurt to try something. So we're trying it. So also last week started um, boot sales and cookie drive-thrus. Um, so just to go a little bit into detail about cookie drive-thrus, um, just some quick points, okay? Just like boot sales, you need a certificate of insurance, okay? So if you're using a parking lot, you have to figure out who that landlord is and get a certificate of insurance. Um, it's a taking everybody a little bit longer to get these things because if you, in previous years, the full campaign kind of set us up for cookies with all the certificates of insurance. We didn't have that this year. So we're basically starting from scratch right now because everything that was on file last year has lapsed. So all certificates of insurance are basically brand new at this point. Um, so keep that in mind when you're trying to get your location. Mom pop shops might take a little longer than say a corporate store, okay? Uh, we were talking about um, some locations. I know for instance, my service unit is, um, has booked a couple of the schools. So they're gonna they set up service unit drive-throughs and then have people signing up for shifts. The school insurance is a little bit faster and a little bit easier to get um, than say, you know, Joe's Pizza, you know? So um, she did a fantastic job of prepping everything and getting it ready for everybody. So she did a great job at that. But schools, college parking lots, business parking lots, a little difficult, but still there, especially if you know the owners maybe. Um, we just wanna make sure the girls stay safe so they stay out of traffic flow, um, stay out of the streets, obviously. Um, and don't interfere with the neighboring businesses because, you know, we try to stay, you know, as friendly as we can with everybody around us. Um, and keep in mind that um, 
drive through should not be held after dusk, okay? Because, you know, you're dealing with vehicles. It's not like you're standing outside a store. So just keep that in mind when prepping your times and stuff like that. Um, basic, like I said before, you need your certificate of insurance. We created a little form this year to make it go by a little bit easier. Uh, I believe it's available on our website, but I can always send, out, send you out this PowerPoint if you wanted to shoot me an email. Um, again, anytime you leave your normal meeting place, it's considered a trip. So a trip approval needs to be on file. So this link also brings you to our website where all the trip approvals need to go. Um, you also still need to tell your service unit what you're doing. Okay, they're still your go-to person to keep track of everything that's going on in their town. So just like in the past, you should find your location, tell your service unit, and then, then tell the council so that way we know you're coming to get product, okay? So just some recommendations for the true cookie drive-through. Shift should be one to two hours long, minimum three girls, maximum six adults, depending on the age range, really. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a grid in a minute that's gonna explain how the setup should go um, there's a couple options, but um, it'll explain to you, you know, with a visual. Make sure that they're doing their PPE. You have to have cleaner. So in between orders, you can wipe down the tables, um, face masks, um, sanitizer, all the normal things that we're so used to using. Um, and like I said, right here in our thing is stations need to be clean in between shifts. Okay, so you don't have to do it really after every customer because the customer is not really going to be approaching the table but it really should be cleaned after every shift. Um, encourage credit card payments. If you have a DOC page, then you could take a credit card payment. Less cash, less dirty money you have to touch, okay? So I'm gonna just actually, this is basically make signs, put stations up. Um, the signs will be available online. They're available on our website. They're av available at littlebrowniebaker.com. Um, girls must remain in the fulfillment area throughout the duration of the drive-thru. They're not to really interact with the, with the cars. Um, the cadets and older can do a little interaction with the cars, but it's still, we're try, still trying to keep everybody as safe as we can by trying to get to a little bit of a normal, okay? So here's our screenshots of what, you know, two different diagrams. You could do a, to the left, you can see the drive-thru booths and you can see it's like a straight line. The parent or an adult would take the order. Then they would give it to the girls underneath the canopy to fulfill the order, okay? And then the, at, at that station too, the parent would actually take the payment, give the order to the girls to fulfill, give it to another adult once the car pulls up and they can hand over the order to the, to the customers. Same kind of gist goes on with our second one, except it's more like a horseshoe, depending on what your space looks like. Um, and this, this scenario here uses a basket. So instead of having to even go, you know, really touch anything, the girls can put it in a basket, the adult can take the basket, and the customer can take their product. So again, this is really just to keep everybody as safe as possible. Um, you know, I'm sure we could tweak these, these diagrams, but this should be really what you're going for. Um, I think it's a great setup. Um, okay, so that was kind of it for um, my boots and Grubhub and all that kind of fun stuff. So just a quick thing, I know you guys are trying to re-register and renew for next year. Okay, so if you need a portion of your rebate to do that, um, we are willing to give you a portion of it so that for right now, so that way you can use that money to register so you could go to the Michelle Obama event. Okay, so um, there's a request here. I've gotten quite a few so far. Um, and if, just make sure that when you send the request and that we have an updated ACH form. So, cause I could get your request, but not have your proper banking and you still won't get it in time. So um, those two links are available right here. Um, so just keep that in mind there. Um, the request has to be in by the 16th and I'm gonna issue the rebates next week for the pre, for the pre, you know, so that way people can get registered in time, okay? Um, we are a go for doing a half price shipping weekend for digital cookie. Um, what we're doing is, is every, six boxes or more, the, the customer is gonna get half price shipping. The weekend is gonna be 423 through 425. They just sent me a sample of what the um, site will look like and everything looked like it was great. And it, it, it was very easy to understand. So that was a nice thing. So we look good to go there. Um, 
So that's a good thing. So we'll be promoting that soon. Um, you can promote that with your customers, even if they want to do a reorder. And I think that's it for me for my cookie updates. Um, one quick done thing that I didn't put in the slide presentation is I literally five minutes before I left the office today, got an email about our full rewards. Um, people are starting to get their tracking information. So they are going out as of today. They, I think they're starting to finish up our, our council. So um, keep tell your service unit, you know, full chairs to keep an eye out for that FedEx. It's, I believe they're shipping by FedEx uh, for their tracking. Okay, so yay, the sloth is on its way. Okay, so um, that makes me very happy um, because now they'll be getting them exactly the same time as the cookies, you know, but you know, it is what it is. We're in a crazy kind of year this year, right? So um, yay for rewards. So um, if anybody needs anything else, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'll be in the office the rest of this week. So um, I'll be in Colmac. So feel free to um, stop by the cupboard or, you know, give us a call, okay? Thank you, Kelly. All Thank right, you. so again, if anybody has questions, you can put them in the chat, but for now we're gonna go on to um, Ann uh, for the shop. Hey everybody, welcome as Jenna said to the April Town Hall and the shop portion. Uh, Jenna's going to share her screen and we're just going to share with you some things we have going on in the shop for spring. So the first thing that we're doing is an Earth Day kit. It's $15 and in it you have a reusable bag a Girl Scouts of Suffolk County water bottle, which actually changes color when you put some cold uh, beverage in there. You have an Earth Day fun patch, uh, some stickers. You have a planter that you, the girls can put their own design on. You have some forget-me-not seeds and a uh, dirt pot. So that's $15, as I said, and we're running that right now for Earth Day, which of course is next week, April 22nd. The next kit that we have is a leader appreciation kit, and these are $25 each. Um, it's for April is National Volunteer Month, so we wanted to put together something uh, for the leaders. The kit includes a Girl Scout mug, a trefoil patterned scarf, a canvas reusable tote, um, and there is a fun patch in there as well. And again, it's for the month of April that we'll be off. Next slide, please. We have uh, a lot of cookie themed product. Uh, the most current one are some thank you cards. We have cookie handheld signs. We have cookie half aprons and of course cookie yard signs. We're also running a last call standabout cookie kit or a standabout kit. That's really not about a last call because there's still plenty of time to sell cookies, uh, but it includes a cookie cart, two cookie buttons, two handheld signs and a money pouch. And that's for $25. So we're running that in the shop as well right now. We also have some kits that we put together. The first one is a first cookie sale kit. Um, it's to congratulate your Girl Scout for participating in their very first cookie sale. It includes a first cookie sale fun patch, two pencils, a sticker sheet, and it's $4. Um, the next thing is a cookie diva kit. And that includes a Cookie Diva Fun Patch, a pencil, a s'more chapstick, and a s'more carabiner. And those are $10 each. And just a note on the pencils, they're by level. So if it's a Cookie Diva Daisy that you have, or a Cookie Diva Brownie or Junior, the pencils will be, um, be according to the level of the girls. Um, and then we have a Thank You Cookie Mom kit. Perfect gift to thank your Cookie Mom for all of their help. So there's a reusable cookie tote, um, a cookie ornament, and you choose which one, and a cookie themed uh, pad of sticky notes. And that's $16 that we're offering now. We also have some uh, fun patches that we put together to go along with the membership and the virtual recruitment programs that they're offering. Um, we have an arts and crafts fun patch that goes along with the Crafting with Carrie series an I Love STEM fun patch for the Mythbusters series, 
And we have two um, cute fun patches that make new friends with the unicorns and an I love Girl Scout emoji patch for the gir virtual Girl Scout troop. And then of course, coming upon bridging season, we have bridging kits. So we have bridge to brownies for $8. We have the bridge to juniors and cadets for nine fifty, And it's a little bit more because it does include the wings as they bridge up. Um, we have the bridge to seniors and bridge to ambassadors. So we're all ready for you guys for bridging season with the kits that we have prepared at the store. And you can also order them at GSUSA and we'll get the orders and we'll get out to you as well. And we're always here to help at any time. Call us um, extension 258 or you can email us and we're happy to answer any questions or help you with anything you need. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anna and Maria. Um, next up is membership. And I think uh, Janet's starting for that, mm -hmm. sorry. Hi everybody, I'm, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of membership this evening. Um, Jackie Morgan will be in the chat for any questions that you have. Uh, and I just wanna uh, pass along a few updates. Uh, first of all, last week we posted on the GSSC website, our update to troop trips. I know that um, it's been shared, but just some highlights in terms of trips, they need to be on Long Island or within the five boroughs. We are not allowing overnight or extended trips right now. And again, all GSSC trip Guidelines must be followed in addition to New York State and CDC guidelines. Uh, so again, anyone that needs any clarifications or has further questions about uh, that information, please feel free to reach out and um, we'll be able to give you more information about that. Also, our renewal period started this month. Uh, the the on-time began April 1st and the first tier incentive goes from April 1st to April 30th. And I can show you what I got in my mailbox today uh, was the Michelle Obama postcard. So um, that is the incentive for April 1st to April 30th, uh, new registrations and renewals. Uh, so please look for more information again about that on our website. But I can tell you that the virtual event featuring Michelle Obama will be on Thursday, May 6th at 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And there is a rebroadcast uh, 10 p.m. on the West Coast. The other renewal incentives include an entry into a raffle to get a copy of Michelle Obama's Young Reader edition. There are five copies that will be uh, chosen, the winners will be chosen for. There is a bucket hat. Uh, if anyone's seen the, the image on our website, it's really cool. And um, I know that people I've talked to already are really excited about it. So uh, definitely check that out. There's also a raffle for two $150 Amazon gift cards. And there is a Girl Scout Strong patch also featured on our website in full color. So you can check that out. And for all troops that have 100% renewal, there's a 10% off coupon for the Girl Scout shop. So again, those are the, the incentives that are running from April 1st to April 30th. Um, so again, any questions you have about those, any uh, registration renewal issues, please reach out and we're happy to help you. Um, I do wanna say with regard to the partnership with Michelle Obama, there's of course the virtual event. There is also uh, program information that we will have more details on in the coming up, but it is available, will be available to leaders on the VTK for all levels and leaders will be able to download that information for their troops. So I definitely look forward to hearing more about that and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have going forward about renewals, the partnership, or um, the troop trips. And now I have an update from Nicole on membership. I'm sorry, on training. Thanks, Janet. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Wolfrath, um, training manager. Just a few updates. Uh, so our troop showcase, unfortunately, is canceled for April 29th on um, self-care and wellness activities. Um, but we do want to still promote our uh, wellness activity, our, our wellness event um, that is happening um, this weekend. You can find it on the program calendar for our older girls. Um, our April calendar of trainings is up on the, um, on the website, and you could continue to register for different trainings throughout the month. Our May calendar will be up soon, and I can tell you that we will be running our highest awards trainings again for gold, bronze, and silver. 
Um, we are also going to be having a troop showcase at the end of the month for bridging ceremonies. Um, and I am going to put in the chat a little uh, solicitation that we are still looking for panelists for the bridging ceremonies and also um, for summer activities. We'd love to highlight leaders um, and girls if you'd like um, you know, one of your girls to join the conversation as well um, to tell us about um, some great bridging ceremonies that you have um, had for your troop or some summer activities that you have done or have planned. So please email me on that. Um, do also want to remind everyone uh, as you start to plan for next year to definitely sign up for our journey to the Girl Scout Leadership Experience level for the next level of your troop um, so that we could thoroughly explain the, the badges that you'll be going over, um, any new awards that you don't know about for the next level, and of course journeys and different highest awards, and just a little bit about how to plan for the next level and what your girl um, will be expecting and like at that age. So definitely register for those. I also want to invite those um, who need a refresher on uh, policies to um, register for Leader Essentials. That is one of our newer workshops that is for new leaders, but also for anyone who needs a refresher. Um, those that still need CPR certification, we are doing our best based upon the COVID guidelines to um, deliver council um, uh, CPR um, and we will be emailing everyone over the next couple of weeks again to let you know about uh, different services we'll be providing to get everyone up and certified. However, we want to encourage all leaders that you can still at your comfort level look for any um, CPR certification courses in your community as long as they are American Red Cross and American Heart Association um, contracted uh, curriculum. If you have any questions about that, you can email me. And last, I uh, just want to let leaders know that the tax exempt form is now available on the volunteer toolkit. When you log on, it's under the first box on the top under resources. You will not find it on the forms and documents page. You'll find it on the VTK. And if you've got any questions about how to navigate that, again, please email me. Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. So um, Nicole spoke of highlighting leaders, and that's what we're going to do now. It, it's actually, I'm really excited about this. I'm meeting Rebecca for the first time tonight. Uh, Rebecca Waldron is a leader for Brownie Troop 120 and Junior Troop 27 in the Harbor Fields area. And she's going to talk tonight about how she's kept her troops active during the past year. And I, I've heard some really great things about Rebecca, so I'm really looking forward to this. So welcome, Rebecca. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, I am a mom of three kids. I have two girls. My oldest is in fourth grade. She is a first year junior. And my second daughter is in second grade. And she's a first year brownie. My little guy just turned five two weeks ago and he's in preschool. Um, I am a lawyer and I am the leader for both my girls' troops. Our kids are very active. Um, we are on two soccer teams, two lacrosse teams, a t-ball team, six dance classes, religion classes, two basketball teams, and of course, the Girl Scout troops. Um, so we're busy, but everybody's busy. And I'm just here to show everybody that you can still make it work even in these super crazy times. Um, Back in March, when we were uh, obviously shut down, I, as you could probably assume, uh, and like most of you, I'm pretty type A, and we had mapped out most of the things we were planning to do for both of our troops for the year, and everything went out the window. And pretty quickly, um, we realized that, um, you know, when everything was first shut down, nobody was meeting, but that the girls really needed to connect. Schools were not doing virtual. Um, so we fairly quickly pivoted to Zoom and my girls, both troops were so thrilled to see their friends in person over the computer. Um, and we quickly sort of adapted because the badges that we were necessarily planning on doing weren't gonna work over Zoom. So for example, um, at the time I had a daisy troop and we wanted to finish 
our last journey so that they could earn their summit award. And the journey that we had been planning wasn't really going to work over the computer. However, I found that the engineering journey actually would work really well because I simply gave parents a list of things that they could gather around their own homes. And the girls were able to, um, over successive meetings, we had three different ones, um, they created their own boats out of paper that you know, had to be able to blow with a straw. Um, and we, I have pictures. Let me see if I could share my screen. Um, we created, oh, those are my kids. And, oh, sorry. And they created uh, fairy houses out of um, just supplies that they had in their house. So they had, you know, um, solo cups that they cut out and people decorated it with stickers and markers. And it was adorable. I found engineering books for girls. There actually is quite a lot um, that you could get on PDF forms. And we were able to read a story uh, before as we were doing each meeting with the girls and explain to them that engineering is all about trial and error. So um, we found that that worked really well. For my Brownie troop, uh, we were supposed to have gone to the Vanderbilt Planetarium. We're up in Huntington and Centerport. So that's just in our backyard, but obviously that was canceled. So. The virtual toolkit um, actually has a lot of really fantastic resources for online Zoom classes. And we found that YouTube is a, another fantastic resource. There are other councils really throughout the country that have run classes and they all put them on YouTube. Um, it's free. And I would uh, go through and sort of pick and choose which video would be most helpful for our girls. But a lot of it, um, I'm going to show you, for example, um, just a small snippet of, of a video that they had that we were able to, that we were able to use, oh, sorry. Give me a second, I'm sorry. Um, oh, there we go. Can you see that? I don't know if you could see that. But this is from the Girl Scouts, like Lake, Lakes and Pines. And That's fine. They had whole videos with the space journey, so I didn't have to. I didn't have to create it myself. Uh, for the end of the year, we typically went on field trips. Uh, we couldn't do that because you know normally you would have your cookie money in, and we had all this cookie money, but we couldn't go anywhere. And so instead, we found a local plaster craft place and we ordered kits for every girl and then over zoom everybody painted an end of the year uh, for my daisy troop they painted daisies for my then brownie troop they painted um, it was like a friendship saying I think with the rainbow and um, they all all the girls together painted pictures this is some of my girls, my older girls painting. Um, and they just found that Zoom was a lot of fun as long as we kept them busy and very interactive. And then over the summer, it, we got the exciting news that we were allowed to socially distance at a park. So we started planning our bridging ceremonies. And we're lucky because there is a park right around the corner that um, is just an open field. So the girls weren't going to be distracted with play sets. And we were really lucky because it was a beautiful 
gorgeous day in August and we socially distanced. And no, it wasn't what we initially expected with our big rainbow cake and all the treats because obviously there was no food, but we were able to have a beautiful day in the park and each girl bridged. That's them going over the little mirror for my daisies to juniors. And I organized it so that my younger girls went in the morning and then my older ones went just an hour or two later so that I only had to set up the park once. And, um, and it worked and it was a lot of fun. And so for, for um, leaders who are looking to still meet in person, just really, I would urge you to find a place in your community. I mean, parks are free, they're open. Um, we met in the park then in September, October, November, we met every week and we just had to try to perhaps rethink some things. So instead of bringing all the supplies that we communally would use, I created just you know, a simple Ziploc bag for each girl. So every girl had a scissors, every girl had basic crayons, uh, markers, and they would use their bag and then I would collect it at the end so that we would have it for the next meeting. Um, and I, it took perhaps a little bit more planning ahead so that I made sure that we had all the supplies at the public park that we were gonna need. Um, when my older troop were brownies, we went to a dance studio to earn our dancer badge. But, you know, in these times, people are really wanting to help other people. They, they want you to still be able to do your events. So our local dance studio, instead they came to the park and they still ran the, the dancer badge for us, but they put it on for us at the park. So for my um, brownies, it was right around Halloween and they, they created, it was really cute, a, um, a whole, I'm gonna see if I can pull it up for you a whole dance for them that our girls put on. I don't know if you could see that. Um, this is them creating a whole Halloween dancing um, coordinated dance in the park. And the girls really had <laughs> such a great time. For our juniors, we tried to use our resources wisely. And um, because in the fall, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, we had the presidential election. So we worked on our democracy badge and uh, myself being a lawyer, we met, we were talking about government and without being political, we were talking about all the important changes that were going on in the world because it's important for the girls to be aware of what's going on. And we also use resources wisely. One of our dads um, is on our local school board. So he came and talked about running for office. And it was actually a very inspiring story because like President Lincoln, he, um, lost his first two elections, but he continued to run every three years and he's been on the school board for five years. So um, it was, we thought a great message for the girls. And I think anytime you can have a guest speaker, it keeps the kids active. Um, as the weather turned colder, we started to look for alternative options so that we could still meet. And our local parish was, uh, our church was welcoming, um, welcomed us to use the uh, community room. So for the holidays, we were able to have a holiday party. The girls made crafts for their parents. Um, we also made wreaths to donate to lonely senior citizens um, who are certainly feeling the absence of community. And um, we had a really, we had a, a great Chris, uh, holiday meeting for both of our girls. Um, then we found that as 
after the holidays, you know, the numbers, the COVID numbers really started to go up and we just uh, didn't feel comfortable needing in person. So we pivoted back to Zoom and we wanted to first try to conquer things on Zoom that made sense that, um, for example, the Brownie computer badge, all the girls are sitting in front of a computer. Let's earn that badge now. I mean, uh, we're obviously not gonna bring computers to the park. So we tried to focus on things that um, would work well. And also after, you know, uh, as we had it, had into January, we had our nut money. So we used the money to um, do a virtual sleepover. So this, the girls absolutely just loved. Um, for the brownie bat, the brownie troop, we earned our playing games badge. And for the junior troop, we made it more of a camping theme. And so they earned their um, camp out badge. And everybody received a, um, everybody received uh, a whole basket full of things. And I'm just gonna share with you. I'm just trying to pull up so I could share with you. Um, I'm sorry. They, they got um, sparkly pillows. They got a whole kit of food. Let me see if it'll work. I apologize. He's not giving me the option. Well, I don't, I'm not seeing it, but. No, that's not it, sorry. I apologize, but um, we created, it, it, we had a, a dance party. So the girls turned off the lights. They all got glow sticks. They were dancing around. They created their own little nooks. So they shared with everybody their tents that they set up. Um, we did scavenger hunts, the uh, camp out ones. They created a snack campfire, um, the playing games. They came up with their own um different games that, that we all went around the room and did. Um, and they just thought it was a great way to connect even though we couldn't meet in person. Um, and as we did Zoom, we found that there were a ton of resources for leaders set up by different corporations, by different companies. For example, NASCAR is running a program where for around $12 a girl, you, they will run, um, so you can earn three different, uh, the three different car um, engineering badges in one, in one meeting. Um, so that's for brownies and juniors. And so it's car design. They have a NASCAR race car driver come on and talk to the girls. They talk about how um, it's important to take into account the environment when you're trying to develop a car and how perhaps the fastest car isn't going to necessarily be the most environmentally friendly car. And the girls just thought it was completely so fascinating. It was a fantastic program. And there are a lot of corporations out there that are doing this. Um, Microsoft, who previously teamed up with Girl Scouts to create badges, um, or to work with us to earn badges. And they did it as a community service. It was completely free. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, they shut all of their retail stores. However, they're still running all those programs free over Zoom. So it's technically, it's open to the public, but if you find a time that works for your troop, you can have your whole troop sign up and they will earn all the requirements for the badge because of course it was a Girl Scout program. So for example, my juniors, they all signed up and they earned their digital photography badge from Microsoft by working through Microsoft. So 
it takes the onus off of us leaders to also plan everything. Um, because I, I certainly can agree that it's a, a bit more trying sometimes and people do get overwhelmed trying to plan a virtual meeting. So there are a lot of things like the NASCAR program. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to register the girls and they earned three badges. So there are a lot of resources out there. And I would definitely recommend that as leaders, you, you look into that. Facebook is a really fabulous uh, resource for us. There are programs like Girl Scouts Leader Chat, um, Brownie Leaders. There are uh, a group called Journeys for Juniors, where people will put on Facebook whole programs that they've developed. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And they'll tell you all this. For my juniors, um, they're earning their programming journey. And one woman created this whole Harry Potter themed for doing um, juniors. She created a whole PowerPoint system. So it's all virtual. And now as a reward, because we've just finished it, we're going to now meet in person in the park and we're doing a muggle Quidditch game, which if you're familiar with Harry Potter is there are like little sports and my girls can't wait. They're coming to the park with brooms and we're gonna be playing uh, Quidditch in the park. So um, there, there are a lot of resources out there. If you're not aware, and I hope I'm not um, speaking out of turn, but I, I think Girl Scouts did announce this week that we're allowed to go on field trips now. And um, I know that we've already booked Sweetbriar Nature Preserve. It's an outdoor program and our uh, brownies are gonna earn their letterboxing and their bug award. And so if there's, um, perhaps a badge that you don't want to teach. I don't want to teach bugs, um, but I don't have to because we get to go to the Sweetbriar Nature Preserve, uh, which is fabulous. And of course, Girl Scouts itself, if you look on the calendar, they do you know, have programs to earn badges virtually. And um, I know that over break, several of my girls signed up for ones that worked for them. Um, a, a few also did journeys. There are um, other programs that run journeys. Making Friends is running journeys in a day virtually. Um, so there are a lot of options out there for leaders. Um, so don't give up. Don't feel that because of these trying circumstances, your girls can't meet. They can. They can and they love it and they love seeing each other. In our district, we have 10 classes per grade. So our girls are often not in the same class. So they love being able to come together because they don't see each other in school. So um, just if you can keep your trip going, there really are um, just tremendous benefits to it for the girls. So that's it. Thank you, Rebecca. That was great. So much information. Um, if you guys have any questions, just uh, just a reminder, we're, we're going to be recording the session. So um, if you can, we're going to post it up on the website. It's usually posted within the next couple of days. So if you want to rewind and kind of use her presentation to get some more ideas, um, please do so because that was very inspiring and very, very exciting. Fantastic. All the Rebecca. other things Fantastic. that your kids are doing. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that info. Um, uh, so next up on the agenda is camp. Um, so we have Maria Fogarty and Mary Ellen Rama here today uh, to speak about camp. Thanks, Jenna. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Fogarty. I am the camp director at Camp Edie in Bayport. Um, just a little background, I've been working for the Girl Scouts for 21 years, I've been camp director for eight years, and before that, assistant camp director. So we're just going to give you some information on our summer camp that's going to happen this year. Um, before I continue, I'd like to introduce Mary Ellen. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Ellen. I have been working in camp for the last four years. I started out as camp director out at our Gapank location, Camp Sebago, um, and uh, was, was due to have my very first summer at Edie last year. Um, and we did have virtual, and I'm looking forward to uh, my, uh, my first in-person season this, this summer. 
So just to give you some information of what's gonna happen this summer at summer camp, uh, we'll be having nine weeks of summer camp. Um, we've reduced the numbers of campers. Usually we have anywhere from 250 to 300 campers a week. Um, we are reducing that to only having 120 a week. Um, summer camp will begin on June 28th and end on August 27th. Um, the cost per week is $375. Uh, week two is a short week because of the 4th of July holiday. So that week will only be, uh, the cost will only be $300. Um, day camp is for girls grades and ent entering first grade in September to 10th grade this year. We've increased the grade. Uh, the camp hours are from nine to 4.30. Um, however, you can drop your camper off as early as 8 a.m. and pick up as late as 6 p.m. at no extra cost. We're doing this for the parents that need the extra time if they have to get to their job. And again, in the evening, if they have to end at five and get back to camp to pick up their camper. Um, campers must need must be dropped off at Camp Beatty and picked up at Camp Beatty. We do not have uh, bus transportation for this year. Um, temperatures will be taken at the time of arrival. Uh, we're working on the um, how the whole system is going to work at arrival time. Um, and we will be giving that information out. Um, Mary Ellen, do you want to continue? Sure. So some other um, changes for this summer will be that all campers and staff will be required to wear masks unless they are outside and socially distanced. And we plan to, as long as the weather holds out for us, we plan to keep them outside and socially distanced as much as possible. Campers will be required to bring their own brown bag lunch with a drink. We will provide um, a individually wrapped snack for the campers. Uh, and the campers are going to, so this uh, summer we're gonna work in a pod, um, which just basically means that our, um, our groups of 15 campers, which will be the maximum, will, all work together independently. They will not be intermixing with the other groups. We will have some activities where the groups will be in the same general vicinity as long as they will all be within um, socially distanced um, CDC requirements. So the groups will not mix. In the event we do have a camper who comes down positive, we will have hopefully only one pod will be affected. Or I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, we will be cleaning and sanitizing um, daily and throughout the day. Groups uh, will each have their own designated area to put their personal items and only that pod will have their items in that area. Due to the safety precautions that we all have to take ourselves, we will not be offering any additional amenities such as horseback riding, swim lessons, or trips. But Campers will enjoy all of their favorite games, sports, swimming, archery, and all the fun that they expect from Camp Edie. We hope to see you there. And I know that a lot of you have question, had question about open houses. Right now we are still working remotely from home. Hopefully the offices will open up and when they do, uh, we will see if we can conduct some open houses. Um, and we'll have all that information on our website. Um, if you, you know, after this evening, if you think of other questions that you'd like to ask us, you can email us at camp at gssc.us and we'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So that's it for summer camp. Thank you both. If there's any other questions, keep putting them in the chat. Um, Sarah and Jackie have been manning both of those, uh, that and the Q&A. So feel free to put those in there. Um, and that just means it's time for the raffle. That's it. <laughs> so Maria, take it away. <laughs> Yay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. So we have three raffles today. The first one is a Girl Scout mug. 
and a set of coasters. And the winner for that one is Laura Menoncella. Congratulations, Laura. The second raffle is a set of cookie cutters, trefoil cookie cutters. And we have two uh, candy molds. And the winner of that one is Lynn. I don't have a last name for Lynn. So if you want to put that in the chat, I can send you an email for pickup. And then the final raffle is we have a keychain, trefoil keychain, and a lovely scarf that you could wear it's with Memorial Day, 4th of July coming up. And the winner for that one is Joanne Lean. Congratulations. So congratulations to our winners. Uh, Maria contacts um, the winners to let them know and just to find out what place they'd want to pick up their location. So just make sure you're, um, you have your information in the chat so she can find you. Um, if there's no other questions, we're going to uh, bring this April town hall to a close. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope we look forward to seeing you guys each month. Um, so thank you and have a great night. Oh, and a special thank you to Rebecca, uh, our, our leader, our learn from a leader, from our learn from a leader segment. Thank you guys. <laughs>